Can you please state your name for the record? Rudy Cornelwin. He amassed tens of millions of dollars by scamming wealthy collectors. Here's the story of Rudy Kurniawan, the wine expert who sold fake bottles. Pendant des années, il a fabriqué de toutes pièces des grands crus. Et des bouteilles qui peuvent allègrement atteindre des prix astronomiques jusqu'à plus de 10 000 euros. L'homme mélangeait de très bons vins et les faisait passer pour des crus très anciens. Il est sous le coup de plusieurs plaintes et risque jusqu'à 100 ans de prison. On ne pourrait même pas imaginer que ce serait la plus grosse escroquerie sur le vin que le monde ait jamais connu. Hello everyone, this week on Big Story, I wanted to talk to you about a scammer, perhaps one of the greatest forgers we've ever known. His name, Rudy Kurniawan. It may not ring a bell, but for nearly a decade, he sold fake bottles of wine to wealthy collectors with almost complete impunity until the day he was unmasked by a French winemaker. It's April 25th, 2008 in New York. The auction house Acker Merrill and Condi, a century old and respected institution, organizes a sale of prestigious wines in a Manhattan restaurant. 260 the center fair warning 260 bottles worth tens of thousands of dollars are put up for sale among them great burgundy wines like the Romanet Conti and Clos Saint-Denis from the 1940s 50s and 60s by the Ponceau estate nous avons commencé à produire cette appellation particulière qu'en 1982 donc forcément là il y a ce qu'on appelle un hic et c'était le début de l'histoire quoi informed a few days before the sale Laurent Ponson contacts the auctioneer to have his bottles removed from the auction Unconvinced by his interlocutor, he flies to New York. Je me suis montré, je suis bien debout, tout le monde m'a vu. Il y a eu un grand brouhaha dans la salle parce que les gens m'ont reconnu. Qu'est-ce qu'il fait là Il y a ses vins, c'est bizarre et tout. Et au moment, le commissaire président, voyant que j'étais là, il était obligé de dire à la demande du, du producteur et avec l'accord du propriétaire des bouteilles, nous allons retirer tous les vins ponceaux de la vente. On m'a dit que le propriétaire de ces vins était Rudy Kurniawan. Rooney Kurniawan is a notable figure in the discreet world of wine enthusiasts. A circle of extremely wealthy collectors who do not hesitate to spend astronomical sums to acquire the rarest and most prestigious vintages. You can find easily up to 50 000 dollars for a bottle of Romane Conti of a year mythic. We will say that the average is between 10 and 20 000 dollars for a bottle of old wine. In the early 2000s, the rare wine market is booming in the United States. Auctions are piling up and Grand Cru bottles are selling for a fortune. $2,800, I'm starting at $500. There's prices that are really pushing very high. I mean, the, 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 the biggest example is 82 Lafitte, which I mentioned earlier. I sold initially for $300 a case. The low estimate now is $32,000, and it sold for $55,000. Between 2002 and 2007, this market grows from $90 million to $300 million, a very lucrative field, especially for speculators. And that's where Rudy Kurniawan makes his entrance. Can you please state your name for the record? Rudy Kurniawan. Of Chinese origin, Rudy Kurniawan's real name is Zen Wang Huang. Born in Indonesia in 1976, he immigrated to the United States with a student visa in the late 1990s and settled in the suburbs of Los Angeles. He a découvert probablement à un moment donné de façon totalement fortuite que les grands vins se vendaient très cher et que ça pouvait peut-être être une a moyen de devenir justement un américain riche. In the early 2000s, Kurniawan studies onology as an autodidact. He specializes in French wine, particularly the great Burgundy wines, which were at the time less valued than Bordeaux in the American market. Notice for his exceptional tasting skills, the young student then rapidly rises in the world of wine enthusiasts. Some even believe him to possess the gift of a super taster, a rare talent that would allow him to experience flavors much more intensely. La seule qualité que je puisse trouver à Rudy Kurniawan, c'est d'avoir une mémoire incommensurable. Under the false identity of Rudy Kurniawan, he claims to be the heir of a wealthy Indonesian family. The young student manages to infiltrate a club of wealthy Californian collectors called the Burgundy Sluts, a club through which he can expand his network and sell vintage wines. For Kurniawan claims to own a cellar of over 50,000 bottles, he himself calls the magic cellar. Sa force ça a été de se mettre bien avec ces gens-là, de devenir le copain, le, le, finalement le gourou presque euh, de, 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 de tout, du tout Hollywood, puisque c'est là, là où il a eu tous ses clients. Kearney Yowen leads a millionaire's life in an upscale neighborhood of Los Angeles. He wears luxury suits, drives sports cars, and acquires artwork by Andy Warhol and Damien Hirst. In auctions, he stands out by keeping his hand raised to outbid and win almost every lot. 
J'avais entendu parler d'un d'un jeune euh, asiatique qui achetait pour un demi-million de dollars, voire un million de dollars de vin par, par euh, mois, euh, qui faisait des soirées, qui menait des vins extraordinaires. J'en avais entendu parler. En 2004, il rencontre John Capon, le auctionneur à la prestigious New York Auction House à Carmel et Condit. 1990, Romain Conti, l'année dernière, 1.56 million. Merci à Capon, Kearney Owen entre dans un nouveau cercle de collectors. The 12 angry men. Il existe, mais comme partout dans le monde, des petits clubs fermés, que j'appelle des clubs décadents, dans lesquels on peut dépenser en une soirée euh, 2 à 300 000 dollars de pinard. Euh, je dis pinard à, à dessin parce qu'à ce moment-là, ils ne savent même pas ce qu'ils boivent. Among the 12 angry men, it is customary for each member to find a nickname. Rudy Kerniawan has two, Dr. Conti and Mr. 47. Il était fanatique du vin de la Romanée Conti et Mr. 47 parce que c'est un millésime mythique à Bordeaux et qu'il avait aussi des tas de vins de, de ce millésime-là. Avec Capone, ils organisent une auction en 2006 qui apporte 10 millions de dollars. Un peu plus tard, ils ont une deuxième auction qui, cette fois-ci, fait 24 millions de dollars. Un record historique pour un seul seller. Rudy Kerniawan est then au peak de sa gloire. But let's go back to the beginning of the story in 2008, when Laurent Ponceau interrupts the auction in New York. The next day, he's invited to dinner by Kearney Owen and Capon in a grand restaurant. J'ai posé la question assez vite, à peine à peine la paire au but. J'ai dit bon alors, ils viennent d'où ces vins Et là, les deux ont plongé le nez dans l'assiette en bredouillant. Oh, C'est pas, on achète tellement de vin, faut qu'on vérifie. Alors là, j'ai compris qu'ils me bourraient le mou pour être pour être franc et quand on achète des vins quand on a des vins comme ça avant on sait d'où viennent. Laurent Ponceau decides to investigate Kearney Owen. He follows his trail to Los Angeles and then to Southeast Asia, specifically Indonesia, his country of origin. J'ai fait mes investigations tout seul pendant deux ans et à un moment donné, j'ai été appelé par le FBI qui savait que je faisais des investigations pour savoir si je pouvais devenir leur conseiller. On a travaillé main dans la main pendant encore deux ans après. Meanwhile, American billionaire Bill Koch discovers that his bottles, supposedly having belonged to Thomas Jefferson, one of the early presidents of the United States, are in fact fakes. He then decides to have his 43,000 bottle seller appraised. In 2009, he sues Kearney Owen and the Acker Auction House accusing them of selling him 200 fake bottles for over $2 million. As suspicions thicken over the origin of Rudy Kerniawan's wine, he struggles to repay his numerous debts, particularly to the Acker Auction House, from which he borrowed $10 million. He wanted to sell me all these wines that were 1940s and 1950s uh, Pomerols, Le Fleur and, um, and Petrus. And I thought that was crazy, and the labels seemed photocopied to me. So I asked him for receipts, and he couldn't give me any. On March 8, 2012, Rudy Kerniawan is finally arrested by the FBI. During the search of his home, agents discover a real laboratory. Fake labels, fake wax seals, fake stamps, and recipes to mimic Grand Cru French wines. Everything is there to craft fake bottles of rare wines from ordinary wines. Je ne donnerai pas les méthodes de Rudy, mais il a trouvé une méthode assez simple. C'est pas difficile, non. C'est pas difficile. Il faut être très précis. Il faut, il faut avoir le, le matériel, les, la matière première, et, et, et on peut. Fact of the matter is, nobody got hurt here. No one. At his trial, Rudy Kerniawan pleads not guilty. He faces 100 years in prison. The suspect remains silent about his production secrets and potential accomplices. Do you speak French? No. And do you write French? No. Just merci. Il n'était pas possible qu'il soit tout seul. Et il n'était pas non plus possible qu'il fasse, qu'il produise les fausses bouteilles tout seul. Il y avait des petites mains derrière. The people who were funding him and the auction house that was making all the money by selling his wine were making sure that um, he was you know, protected. Rudy Kearney Owen is eventually sentenced to 10 years in prison and ordered to repay $28 million. Very surprised, uh, stunned, I think. Uh, we did not expect the judge to impose a sentence at that length. Since the Kearney Owen affair, the traceability of prestigious wine bottles has been strengthened, but the bottles sold by the Indonesian forger continue to fill the sellers of collectors. On va revoir sortir dans les ventes aux enchères des fausses bouteilles de Rudy. Très peu de victimes se sont fait connaître pour ne pas justement tomber de leur piédestal, parce que ce sont souvent des gens célèbres ou riches. Et donc on a perdu beaucoup d'argent, mais on en a encore assez pour pouvoir continuer de vivre. Et donc ben, on, on se tait. Ça c'est assez classique de, de ce milieu de, 
d'hyper riche, on va dire. Voilà. As for John Capon, he was not troubled by the American justice system. He continues to thrive in the sale of prestigious wines. Rudy Kurniawan was released from prison in 2002 before being deported to Indonesia. Since then, he has reportedly resumed his activities in the wine business. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments and subscribe to the Brute channel. And if you want to watch more videos like this, the playlist link is in the description. See you soon.